Let's look at the regiochemistry of the E2 mechanism. So first we'll draw our products. We'll go through the mechanism, draw the products, and then we'll talk about why this reaction is regioselective. On the left is our alkyl halide, and here's our strong base, sodium ethoxide. So Na plus, and ethoxide has a negative charge. Since we're dealing with a strong base, we know we're going to do an E2 mechanism. The carbon that's directly bonded to the bromine would be the alpha carbon, and the carbons that are directly bonded to the alpha carbon are the beta carbons. So I'm gonna call this carbon beta one, I'm gonna call this carbon beta two, and I'm gonna call this carbon beta three. So sodium ethoxide is our strong base. It's gonna take a proton from one of our beta carbons. And let's think about beta one first. So I'm gonna draw in a proton here on the beta one carbon. And ethoxide is a strong base. So I'm gonna draw in the ethoxide anion. There's a negative one formal charge on the oxygen. And the ethoxide anion is gonna take this proton. And these electrons are gonna move in here to form our double bond. At the same time, these electrons move off onto the bromine. So let's draw our product. If we take a proton from the beta one carbon, so it would look like that. And let's show those electrons. These electrons in here, and magenta moved in here to form our double bond. It would be the same result if we took a proton from beta two. So we just took a proton from beta one. If we took a proton from beta two, we would get the same alkene. Let's move on to the beta three carbon. So let's take a proton from our beta three uh, carbon. And let's do that over here. So here's our proton and let's draw in our ethoxide anion right here. So I'll put in my lone pairs of electrons on the oxygen, negative one formal charge. So we're going to take this proton and then these electrons move into here and then the electrons come off onto our leaving group to form the bromide anion. So the alkene that would form if we took a proton from our beta three carbon, let me draw it in here. So there's our double bond. We would form that. So our electrons in magenta came in here to form our double bonds. And these would be the two products for this reaction. It turns out that the isomer on the right is the major product. So this one is the major product. And the one on the left is the minor product. So we are talking about regiochemistry here, or think about the region of the molecule where the double bond forms. So this reaction is said to be regioselective because one of the isomers is favored. And let's talk about why. The major product on the right is a more stable alkene. It's more substituted. If we look at the carbons for our double bonds, we have one, two, three alkyl groups. This is a tri-substituted a tri-substituted alkene, whereas our minor product on the left, this carbon has only two alkyl groups bonded to it. So this one is a di-substituted alkene. And we know from, our, from talking about stability of alkenes, the more substituted alkene is the more stable one. And we call this the Zaitsev product. So this, this would be the Zaitsev product, the more substituted alkene. And this is the major product. It's the most stable one. And so that's why this, this reaction is regioselective. If you use sodium ethoxide, the major product is the more stable alkene. Now let's do this reaction using a different base. So we're starting with the same alkyl halide and I actually left up the same products. But this time we're gonna go through thinking about potassium tert-butoxide as being our base. So there's a positive charge on potassium and negative charge on the oxygen. Potassium tert-butoxide is a sterically hindered base. So let me just add on to the drawing that I did in the previous example where we use sodium ethoxide as the base and I'm gonna change it to make a uh, tert butoxide. So let me draw in here. So now, now, we have, now we have our tert butoxide anion here functioning as a base. So if this takes a proton from the beta one or beta two positions, we form the di-substituted alkene. And if we go over here, if we take a proton from the beta three position, let me add in, let me add this stuff in here. So now we have our tert butoxide anion. We're gonna form our tri-substituted alkene. This time, the di-substituted alkene turns out to be the major product. So this one is the major product, and the tri-substituted alkene is the minor product. 
And we can explain this by thinking about the fact that potassium tert-butoxide is a sterically hindered base. So on the left, we have these bulky methyl groups. But if we're taking a proton from beta 1 or beta 2, our base can be out to the side and relatively out of the way. So it's easy for the base to take one of these protons. But on the right, as we get a little bit closer at the beta 3 position, we have more steric hindrance here. So there's more steric hindrance that prevents the base from taking the proton as easily. And so that's why, that's why the tri-substituted product turns out to be the minor product when you are using a a sterically hindered base like potassium tert-butoxide. So in this case, in this case, the major product is the less substituted alkene, and we call this the Hoffman product. So let me write that in here. So this would be the Hoffman product. And this is the major product when a sterically hindered base is used. So pay close attention to what base is used in an E2 mechanism. If you are using an unhindered strong base, something like sodium ethoxide, your major product is the Zaitsev product, the more substituted product. But if you're using a sterically hindered base, something like potassium tert-butoxide, the Hoffman product, or the less substituted product, is the major product.